Hi, my name is Tyler Mowry, and welcome to the Writer's Mind Podcast, episode 19. All right, welcome to the podcast. If you're looking for episode 20 and all the other even episodes, they are available on the Patreon, patreon.com slash the writer's mind. So first off, elephant in the room, if you're not watching on YouTube, yes, I have a different shirt on today that isn't a black t-shirt or a white t-shirt. I'm switching it up today. Most of the time it's going to be a black t-shirt or a white t-shirt. That's who I am, you know. I like to keep it simple. But today... I'm adding a collar, you know, just a little extra. I got to keep you guys guessing. But today, what I want to talk about is an interesting question. So today, what I want to talk about is, is power evil? So power is such an interesting topic, such a fun topic. This, I'm sure, will not be the only podcast that I do on power, but today I want to talk about power. I want to talk about what it is and whether or not it is a good thing or a bad thing or if it's a neutral thing and how it works. So first off, what is power? So I think the most basic definition of power is that power is control and power is the ability to make changes in the world around you. Uh, have, be able to make decisions for yourself, be able to make decisions for other things in the world around you, uh, you know, because a lot of things fall into that idea. So, for example, strength, physical strength is a power in the sense that you have physical control over the world, or political power is power in the sense that you have um, political control over a select group of people. Um, influence is power in the sense that you get to move and change and control the decisions that other people make. And so power is largely control. So now power exists whether you want it to or not, right? It's a big topic that we see a lot in our world today about different, you know, groups having power over other groups, systems having power, different political systems, all these different ideas. And, but power exists whether you want it to or not. And there are all sorts of levels of power. So you have like the individual power level, your individual control over yourself. Then there is the community power level, your, or an individual's uh, control and power over community. And then there, it, it just goes up and up and up. And then you have national power, global power, all of these ideas. And so um, what I want to talk to you today is I want to talk from this, from a, a couple things. So there's this book I read that I really, really like, and it is called uh, The Dictator's Handbook. Let me see. Um, it was written by Bruce Bueno de Mesquita and Alistair Smith. It's called The Dictator's Handbook, Why Bad Behavior is Almost Always Good Politics. So this was a really interesting book for me to read. And um, I have some quotes here that I want to talk about from it. And, um, you know, as we see in our world, we have just so many conversations about power and its use and how it's evil and how it's bad and you know, playing this idea that like playing power games is bad, you know, gaining control, trying to gain control over your community or over other people is a bad thing. And I want to just kind of talk through some of these ideas. So in the dictator's handbook, they essentially talk about power structures and they're talking about power in the sense of political systems and how different political systems, um, how the power structures work. Now, what they really come down to is they talk about idealism versus reality. So power is a lot more about reality 
and a lot less about idealism, right? So different ideologues, they have beliefs about different political systems, socioeconomic systems, these different things. And what this book is about is it talks about how power simply works. And it looks at different points in history, how different systems of leadership and government have handled different situations and, you know, what their goals were and what their ideas were and what they were trying to do. Um, And so, you know, a quote from here, a quote from the book says, When addressing politics, we must accustom ourselves to think and speak about the actions and interests of specific named leaders rather than thinking and talking about fuzzy ideas like the national interest, the common good, and the general welfare. Once we think about what helps leaders come to and stay in power, we will also begin to see how to fix politics. Politics, like all of life, is about individuals, each motivated to do what is good for them, not what is good for others. So, what they set up in this book is that the world that we exist in is not a world of idealisms. The world we exist in is a world of individual people making decisions. And ultimately, all individuals make decisions for themselves first and foremost. Even if you are a very altruistic person, many times you are doing these things because you want to believe that you yourself are a good person. And this kind of comes into the idea of, are there actually any actions that are not selfish actions in the sense of you serving yourself first and foremost? And I think that in many ways, that is what we are doing, you know, and and what is good is to understand that other people are doing this as well. And if we understand that we are kind of ultimately serving ourselves in our general day to day things for better or for worse, that's not necessarily an evil thing. But we also need to understand that the people above us sort of politically and these different things, they are also working for themselves first and foremost, not for these fuzzy ideas like the common good or the general welfare like this book is talking about. So. Another uh, another thing that this book says, another quote from this book says that the big questions of how the world ought to be are indeed important, but they are not our focus. Questions of philosophical values and metaphorical abstractions, these simply don't apply to the view of politics that we will present in the pages ahead. We did not start with the desire to say what we think ought to be, It is hard to imagine that anyone, including ourselves, cares much about what we think ought to be. Neither do we exhort others to be better than they are. Not that we do not hope to find ways to improve the world according to our lights. But then, we believe that the world can only be improved if we first understand how it works and why. Working out what makes people do what they do in the realm of politics is fundamental to working out how to make it... Excuse me. Working out what makes people do what they do in the realm of politics is fundamental to working out how to make it in their interest to do better things. So what they're saying there is essentially when we take a realistic understanding of the world and a realistic understanding of history and politics, we can have a better understanding of our present situation and have a better understanding of what is the best thing to do going forward. And so what is interesting is they say, what for a leader is the best way to govern the answer how to best the answer to how to best govern however is necessary first to come to power than to stay in power and to control as much national or corporate revenue as possible along the way so this book what they're talking about is they're talking about power specifically as it relates to political structures. And they're talking about how individuals gain and hold and maintain power in different structures. Now, what they also talk about is how different sizes of groups of people, they're all still is generally the same kind of power structure. So they talk about from the familial level to the business level, the small business level, to the corporate level, to full nations, they all sort of run off of the same general ideas. And the reason for that is because individuals do operate in a predictable way. We operate 
first and foremost for ourselves, right? And I think that a lot of people are uncomfortable with that idea, the idea that we operate for ourselves because it it's this idea that we are fundamentally evil for putting ourselves first in life. Whereas I don't think so at all. I think that what you have to do is you have to come to terms with the idea that human beings are built to stay alive and to survive and to continue on. And you, you know, biologically, we do not have control, full control over the survival of other people. We only have control over our own survival. Therefore, just on a biological sort of uh, instinctual level, we are going to put ourselves first because we want to survive and we want to have children and keep going on. And so what's interesting about this book is it starts to break down some of the preconceived notions we have about different ideologies. And so in this book, it talks about how governments are not necessarily built to be these, these, um, you know, pantheons of, of general welfare for the people. Governments, most of the time, are built to serve the people that run them. Why? Because individuals ultimately work for themselves. Now, the problem with this is now we can get into the idea of, okay, is power evil? It's like, well, I don't believe that power is evil necessarily. I think that power is just an element of life. You know, power is just like the air we breathe. Systems are going to have power within them because power is control. Different people are going to have different levels of control in a given system. And so off of that idea, we can then apply that to politics and we can say, okay, the different systems that we have are people operating within their own interests and having a certain level of power. So um, one of the things they talk about in this book is they talk about taxation which is really, really interesting because they talk about why certain nations repeat specific patterns in regards to wealth and taxation and these sorts of things. For example, in this book, they say, from a leader's point of view, the most important function of the people is to pay taxes. Why? Because taxes keep the government running and taxes keep the people who are running the government in power. What's also interesting is... Um, they say that um, it is interestingly beneficial most of the time for people in power in a government to heavily tax the poor and intentionally not tax the rich as hard because the rich will give them money in different ways and the rich can be you know, a part of their larger operating system, which is really interesting, which I think is something that we see today. Um, and so what this book did for me, uh, let me, let me find a little bit more to read here. So what they talk about is they say there are, there are, um, so they say that there are three political dimensions for leaders. The political landscape can be broken down into three groups, the nominal selectorate, the real selectorate and the winning coalition. So essentially what they are, say is that governments do not differ in kind. So between dictatorships, democracies, these different ideas, they differ along the dimensions of their selectorates and winning coalitions. These dimensions limit or liberate what leaders can and should do to keep their jobs. So what they're talking about is how all systems of government essentially operate under these principles. There are the winners, there are the people that are important to keep the winners in power, and then there are the people that don't matter to keep the winners in power. And that's the system. So if you have a dictatorship, what you see is you have the winners being the dictator and their coalition. And then you have the middle group, which whether they vote or whether they are rich people who pay, um, you know, are paid off so that the dictator and his friends or her friends can stay in power. And then you have the people that don't matter. For example, the, the, the poor in a dictatorship. Now, this also applies to democratic systems or supposedly democratic systems where you have the people that are in power, people who stay in elected office for a long time. And then you have the people who um, uh, they use to keep them in power. So the rich people or people who, you know, make donations, uh, people who, you know, execute different sort of 
uh, campaigns, advertisements, these sorts of things. And then you have the people that don't matter. So, you know, the amount of people who don't vote or the amount of people whose vote doesn't matter, these sorts of things. And then you start to realize that a lot of these systems are very similar. Um, and so what what's interesting about this is that when you realize that no matter sort of any political or governmental system, socioeconomic system you're in, some of these rules always remain the same. Individuals always want to keep and maintain power. You have people who are the winners, people who keep the winners in power, and then the people who don't actually matter to the system, who can't influence the system. And that continues on all different types of governments. And what's interesting is that this also applies for corporations. You have CEOs, you have board members, and then you have like employees that don't actually have any sort of control for what happens. And so then this, this can come all the way down to a family where you have like, let's say the parents are the people that are, you know, quote unquote in power. And then you have, um, let's say certain people, or let's say they're one of their children can influence what they do. And then you have children who can't influence what they do. So this is really a fractal system that can come down very small and go very, very, very large and encapsulate billions of people. And so what's interesting is that when you understand that, then you start to think about, okay, so how does this actually interact? How does this sort of realistic view on how people operate actually interact with our understanding of politics and how does it interact with our ideologies? And that's what I really want to get to. Um, so another quote from this book is they say, our starting point is the realization that any leader worth her salt wants as much power as she can get and to keep it for as long as possible. Managing the interchangeables, influentials, and a system and, and essentials to that end is the act, art, and science of government of governing. So what they're saying is leaders want to stay in control. Therefore, to play the game, they are focused on how to keep themselves in power by using these three groups of people, the winners, the people who keep the winners in power, and the people who don't matter to the system. And so, you know, you can ask yourself, oh, well, does this mean that there are no ideologues? Does this mean that there are no people who genuinely want to help people, who genuinely want to uh, be beneficial for the common good? And I say, absolutely those people exist. And those people exist in government and they exist in corporations and they exist in nonprofits. But what's interesting about this book and why I highly recommend you read it, it's called The Dictator's Handbook, again, if you need the name, is that they talk about examples of people in history who were trying to be ideologues who wanted to truly help the people around them but failed because of that because they were not playing the power game they were killed or voted out of office or fired because they were putting the the um they were putting the the desires and needs of the people in front of their own desire to stay in power and so what's interesting is there really isn't any sort of way to play the game without operating at least within these rules. Now, what's interesting about this book is they do talk about different leaders in history who were ideologues and also played the game. So people who genuinely were looking out for the welfare of the people, but who also played dirty and, you know, undercut people and even killed people and blackmailed people and all these things because they, they knew they had to stay in power. And so what's interesting is you really have this kind of this is where this idea of this evil underbelly exists with power of like, where is, where is the ethical line in power? And, and you get into this whole idea of like, okay, what is, can we actually have things that are quote unquote for the greater good, for the benefit of the people, you know, it's sort of ends justifying the means type of ideas, or is this all just, um, just sort of evil. And this is the idea of like, is power evil? How does power actually influence how we exist? And are there, does power always end up in an evil place or can power actually be beneficial? Now, another thing that they talk about is that, which I really like this is they say, Democrats aren't angels. Uh, democratic systems like we have in America, like you see a lot um, in a lot of the world today, we have Democrat, we have democratic system, we have democratic republics, and 
what they say in this book is, as we all know, the writer, the victor writes history. Leaders should therefore never refrain from cheating if they can get away with it. Democrats may have to put up with real and meaningful elections in order to stay in power, but it shouldn't be shocking to see that whenever they can, they'll happily take a page out of Lenin's book and rig the elections. They talk about Lenin rigging and elections in this book. There's no election better than a rig one. So as long, so long as you're the one rigging it. So, and what's so fascinating in this book is that they go into different um, democratic systems around the world and how they use public perception and how they use the illusion of voting and all these different things to set up the system so that the winners stay in power and that everybody else thinks that this is a fair game. And so, like, this is such a fascinating book. I absolutely recommend you read it. I read this a while ago, and um, it was actually pretty impactful in uh, changing my worldview. So, I've talked about what I've done over the last 20 minutes or so of this podcast is I've talked about how this book, The Dictator's Handbook, talks about how essentially all systems of government operate under the same fundamentals there's different sizes to the winning group and the and the and the middle group and the bottom group there's you know and there's differences here but largely it operates under the same principles that leaders must stay and maintain power uh, many times through heinous acts um, and through cheating and so what what do we do about this is the question you know so for me, and I really recommend you read this book and read other books, of course, and build your own worldview. But I'm going to tell you my worldview because this is my podcast. <laughs> um, so what this book did for me and what other books did for me, and it was something that I had already thought about for a while, is it really made it clear that individuals fundamentally operate for themselves. And fundamental individuals can be um, giving and helpful and altruistic and all of these ideas, but we are just fundamentally built to be selfish for better or for worse. And I don't necessarily believe that's a totally bad thing, but it can be. And I don't think it's a totally good thing, but I also think it can be. But what I do think is I think the socioeconomic and political systems that we see in the world, they're just words. These are just ideologies. They're not real. These ideas like we, we toss around words like socialism and fascism, but they're all the same thing. There really has only ever been one system. And that one system is the few people that have control and influence and the people that don't. That's what it's always come down to. We can talk about socialism, we can talk about fascism, we can talk about capitalism, we can talk about all these isms and different ideas, but what it comes down to is that some people have power and control and some people don't. So what do we do with this as people who want to have high agency, as people who want to make change in the world, as people who genuinely do want to bring beneficial and impactful and helpful ideas to other people. What do we do with this? Well, what we don't do is hide behind ideology and pretend like none of this matters. What we don't do is say, oh, well, this stuff actually isn't real. And actually, these ideologies work perfectly and we should aspire to those. I don't believe that at all. But what I do believe is that power is important and that your personal power is important. And that your ability to change the world and control things and to lead and to give example of how things should be and how you believe things should operate, you must have an understanding of power. And to have an understanding of power, you need to allocate power to yourself. Now, what does this mean? What does allocate power mean? Well, this is there's a few different ways. Allocating power is financial power. It's... Uh, influential power in the sense of having people who listen to you. It is 
control as much as possible over your own life and over your own time. And the most fundamental one is that your mind, as much as you possibly can, is under your own control. That you are aware of the thoughts that you're having. That you are aware of the narratives that are happening inside your mind. That you are becoming in control of how you think and how those thoughts then change the actions that you take. And that's where it starts. And here's the problem, right? Because if, if you don't go through this process, regardless of your view on power, many people think power is just simply evil. There is no um, silver lining to power that is just an evil thing and we should avoid it altogether. But the problem is, when you say that, that is a power statement. It's somebody saying, nobody should, nobody should try to gain power. And what is that statement? It's a statement, so it's, it is a power statement trying to influence other people to not have any control. And it might even come from a place of altruism and desire for us to all live together in beautiful harmony. But either way, it is still a power statement because we are constantly in a system of power. So, I believe that as an individual on a small scale, and that slowly grows over time, you must allocate power to yourself. Allocate control. Allocate financial control. Allocate um, control over the world around you. Um, you know, for yourself and for those that you care about. Because if you do not, you will be tossed around by different people who come in with their own influences and their own political ideas and their own ambitions and their own individual goals that may or may not coincide with yours. If you're stuck inside of a political system, which we all are no matter where we live in the world, any political system, there's going to be a few things that don't work, <laughs> at least a few. And the more control you have over how you react to those situations and the more control you have to you know, change things and, 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 you know, leave if you have to, or, or, or change certain or be influential in certain ways, the more control you're going to have and the more power you're going to have and the more your life is going to be good and how you would like it to be. So I think that there is a good, healthy understanding that the world is not the ideologies that we like to toss around. These are just ideas. What is the real root of some of these concepts? What really is the difference between socialism and capitalism? You can give me a definition, of course. But, we're, we're, but when we get actually into real life, what is a capitalistic system? What is a socialistic system? You know, really, I think when you look at different parts in history or even, you know, clearly, clearly we see that certain ways of operating work better than others. Of course, we can see that. But how much control do you have in the direction that your particular government goes? Not really a lot. You know, if, if you live in a nation where you can vote, you are what? one vote in millions, assuming that you actually have an election that is fair. And if you have a realistic understanding of the world, why would all these elections be fair? And this book gives tons and tons of examples of elections that are absolutely not fair in supposedly democratic countries. And this is not talking about anything that's happening right now. This is talking about things that have happened in the past. Let's look at history and understand how that can inf inform where we are now. And we can assume that people have not radically changed <laughs> how they function fundamentally from 200 years ago or 100 years ago or 30 years ago than they do now. And so I think it is to your own benefit to figure out how you can gain personal power. Because if you cannot... You will always be 
led and pushed around by those who have power over you. And it makes it a lot harder for you to do your own thinking and make your own decisions when you don't actually have the power to change things in the world. And again, this is why this podcast exists. This podcast exists to make you think because the first element of power is thinking for yourself first. That's it. You think for yourself first, you analyze your own situation, you analyze what you want, you analyze your worldview, you do all of that, and then you can start in the world. And so I'm sure that some people will will be angry about some of the things I've said here, but that's good because it is challenging and forcing you to say, oh, well, let me examine some of the ideas that I'm holding. Is Tyler just an idiot and wrong? Maybe. But I think it's important to do some thinking. And definitely read this book, The Dictator's Handbook, written by Bruce Bueno de Mesquita and Alastair Smith. Fantastic book. Such an eye-opening book. Such a great read. So I hope you enjoyed this podcast. If you did, leave a like if you're on YouTube and leave a comment. I'd be really interested to hear what you have to say. And if you want to listen to episode 20, it's available on the Patreon right now, patreon.com slash the writer's mind. And I will see you next week.